I had never heard of so-called synthetic marijuana until probably the day after my son died. I was at my friend's house and I got a phone call and um, I was told that my son had died. Our son, um, no different than any other uh, child uh, here in Frederick County, he was a straight-A student, played baseball, did everything by the books, um, and then unfortunately, you know, somebody either introduced him or however he got involved in it, and it was all downhill from there. I bought a bag, and I tried it, and then I got addicted. I smoked it and smoked it and smoked it, and then I bought my own, and then I was smoking like a half a bag a day. Three families, thousands of miles apart, but all linked by a dangerous drug. These are the stories of Tristan Cantor, an athlete who was getting ready to head to college. Emily Bauer, a 17-year-old known for her funky hair colors. And Max Dobner, the adventurer who loved snowboarding, his dog, and his family. Three stories, three very different outcomes. It goes by many names. I smoke Kush, Climax, and um, Mr. Nice Guy. Spice, K2, Scooby Snacks. It's also known as synthetic marijuana, or more formally, synthetic cannabinoids, a designer drug where chemicals are created in a lab, then sprayed on herbs and sold in stores. Synthetic because it's meant to mimic the effects of actual marijuana. These drugs can be purchased in gas stations and convenience stores, cleverly marked as potpourri, with a label on the back that reads, not for human consumption. But don't let the label fool you. That's exactly what this product is for. Just ask the parents of Tristan Cantor. Their son began experimenting with drugs when he was 15. After years of trying to get clean, he turned to synthetic cannabinoids as a safe alternative because not only is it easily accessible, this stuff doesn't show up on drug tests. I recall Tina or her mother finding the packages, the empty packages, and we didn't know what they were. They were just their son's way to get a high, a high that turned out to be more dangerous than Tristan originally thought. Tristan told us of numerous occasions where he was in, the, uh, in a vehicle with, with other people, not driving, but he had become almost paralyzed and couldn't move under the influence of synthetic marijuana. He's now in rehab and on the road to recovery. He's planning to go to college in the spring. But for Emily Bauer's family, recovery wasn't as easy. Emily had been smoking synthetic marijuana for months until one day her body couldn't take it anymore. She didn't know where she was. She wasn't making any sense. It was gibberish. She was bumping into walls. They found that she had multiple strokes that damaged 70% of her brain and told her family she would remain in a vegetative state. What was that moment like when you decided that you were going to stop medication, that you were going to stop the tubes? Yeah, that was, that was one of the hardest things. And uh, I mean, it was nine months ago and I still get choked up. Dad, yeah, <laughs> every time I talk about still alive. I know. At first, Emily had no control of her arms or legs, and she was blind. Now she's back at school and learning to walk again. The family believes Emily's pre-existing condition, combined with the synthetic cannabinoid, almost took their daughter's life. Where were you getting it from? The corner store, of course. When one of your friends went in to buy it, did they make them show ID? Was it pretty easily accessible? No, they didn't make them show ID or anything. Paranoia, anxiety, rapid heart rate, trouble breathing, hallucinations. All of these are real effects that doctors have reported. In just 2010 alone, the drug was linked to over 11,400 emergency room visits. It's Russian roulette. You don't know what you're going to get. It's a statistic Karen Dobner knows by heart. Karen says her son Max only tried synthetic marijuana one time, and it cost him his life. The store owner actually talked them into purchasing the product. He uh, was with his friend who um, drove him home, um, smoked it, and she dropped him off. He, she said that when he walked into the house, he looked fine. Um, I guess a few minutes later, he didn't feel so fine. And um, half an hour later, he jumped into his car and drove 100 miles down the road. 
and people were calling 911 saying they see a car drug going 100 miles an hour down the road, weaving in and out of traffic on the wrong side of the road, making corners wide. And eventually his car landed in a house and uh, he flew 80 feet through the air and landed in a house and died. Max's death is a reality the Dobner family confronts every day. It's still painful. It's, it's, it's a different life. My life is different without Max. Um, he was my best friend. So um, my life has completely changed. It was a horrible ending to a beautiful life. One in nine high school seniors admitted to trying synthetic cannabinoids in 2011, according to a survey by the University of Michigan. And Karen fears it won't be long before there are more deaths as a result of these dangerous chemicals. Max was the perfect son. He did all the right things. He made one mistake and it killed him. And if it could happen to Max, it could happen to anybody, any kid. In Washington, Megan Lopez, RT.